G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, in this video, we're just going to have a quick look at uh, air tools, oiling air tools, the options available, and uh, just cover the safety aspect as well. With air tools, uh, I mean, there's cheap these days, a big range of them. I've got half a dozen here uh, of my own, and uh, they're good for the workshop. They're not essential, but they make life a lot easier, like any power tool. And the only thing you really need to worry about with air tools is the air you feed them and, uh, and oiling them. Uh, a lot of people just oil them at the tool itself. Um, they don't worry about automatic oilers. And it's really the simplest and probably the most uh, utilitarian way to go about it because you can run the air tool off of any clean air supply. You don't need a dedicated airline for it. And all you do is you get your little bottle of oil and uh, you put a couple of drops of oil in the connector. Um, big, good beginning of the day and then from there after every couple of hours put a couple more drops of oil in. A lot of workshops just put oil into their tools at tea break. So they go all morning, have tea break, then they go through to lunchtime, oil them each of those um, breaks and, uh, and in the afternoon and that's all we ever do. So uh, a little bottle of oil does the job. Now uh, I did see a guy comment the other day on a forum about these things, these are those cheap inline oilers you can get and you get them quite often with little air grinders and things like that. My advice is don't use them, uh, they're total rubbish. Uh, his comment was, well, how do you adjust them? Well, the answer is you, these simple ones you can't adjust whatsoever. Uh, you can get some that are adjustable, but they're more expensive. Uh, but once again, they're pretty primitive. If you're going to have inline oiling, look towards a proper commercial unit. And uh, you can see I've got a Festo here, uh, which is a proper industrial unit. It's a dedicated airline and uh, it's a good unit. But certainly these cheap shit things are just that. They're rubbish. Don't use them. They'll just put gallons more oil through the tool than it needs. It'll make a huge mess and uh, it'll be the bane of your life. So uh, forget about it. Get a proper one like that. These are good, but the, uh, the downside is, of course, that you have to use a dedicated uh, airline for the air tool because the airline will be contaminated with oil over time and uh, you would never want to use the airline from the automatic oiler for air dusting. You can see I've got two separate lines here. One's blue, one's black. Blue is clean, dry air. Black is air through it that's gone through the automatic oiler. So you have to split your air system uh, at some stage and not use the black hose for anything other than automatic uh, oiling of air tools. So overall the best way to go is just have plain air line. Add a bit of oil to your air tools every so often and you're good to go. That way you can use your airline for spray painting, air dusting, everything. You're not going to contaminate the hose as you're directly oiling at the, uh, the point of uh, use the tool itself. Having a, um, a separate oiler is handy, providing you can buy them cheap because they're not cheap to buy normally. They're quite expensive and uh, you know they're really only useful for people who are using tools on a continual basis. In this case I've got it very cheap so I bought it but uh, prior to that I just used a plain old single airline. So what else do you need? Well obviously you need some air, compressed air and uh, whether you've got a, a wet type uh, pump, uh, a wet sump compressor or an oilless compressor uh, you'll still have to run the air through a, a water trap of some sort and uh, water traps also take out oil vapour. 
So you have to make sure the air is uh, dry, free of contaminants, and uh, if you use that in your air tools, well, your air tools will run a, a long time and you'll have no problem. Uh, in my earlier videos, I show you how you can make a intercooler for uh, an air compressor like this, put it between the, the tank and the water trap, and that will get your water trap working correctly, and uh, it'll ensure the, uh, the continued life of your air tools. Okay, so that's what the tools need. Now we'll move on to the next stage. So that's what's good for the tools. Now what's good for the operator? Well, from an arc health and safety point of view, with these tools you should be using the correct oil. And this is uh, air tool oil. You get some with your, your little gun quite often, not always. But if you're going to use air tools, spend a buck use the right oil. It's formulated for your safety. It only has one known um, toxin in it, which is basically petroleum-based oil. It's not thought to be carcinogenic, but you never know. And uh, you've got the choice of using the correct stuff or do what a lot of people do and use something else, which will do the job. And from a tool's perspective, It'll work fine. What about transmission fluid? First cab off the ring. Works, it works great. I've used this stuff in the past, and I know people have used this stuff 30, 40 years in the industry, never had a problem. But it is, it is worth pointing out, and I make the point in this video, that ATF has at least five or six known toxins in it, which are considered uh, dangerous. Uh, from an oil health and safety perspective, some of them are known carcinogens. And while this stuff's good for automatic, tra automatic transmission fluids, and it's good for tools, it's not good for your lungs if you're breathing it in. And remember, whatever goes in this end comes out through the exhaust port. Every every one of these tools has got an exhaust port, so those vapors, even though there may not be a lot. You're breathing them in, remember. That is going through the system and eventually it's going to finish up in your lungs. So there you go. Uh, it's an aspect rarely gets mentioned in air tool videos, but it's something you want to think about. So there you go. I hope this video has been of some use to you. Made you think a bit about um, what's best uh, in the workshop and how to look after yourself and the tools at the same time. So that's it from me. I'll see you next time. Cheers.